Um, I'm going to build all of these and then install one or two others as well. And as I say, these should now work even with a GNOME environment or LXD or XFC or any other environment in theory. So let's grab this. And extract it. And as I said, most of these commands are just fairly straightforward. Similar way to install each one. So let's oops, install this now. Let's complete. And tidy that up or cross that off. So if I try and run this now, it should work fine. I think it might be. I'm not sure if it's that one. Let's search. Oh no, it's not finding it. So. Maybe that command to update the database. Um, in fact, I could run it from here. So you can see it's run. Um, about KDE and about ARC. Um, let's open a archive. Looks like it's filtering by default. Yes, it is. So, for example, I can look at, um, yeah, let's look at the extra CMake modules, the first one that was built, and as you can see, it's expanded it. And we can go into each one. And like I say, it's a, it's a um, KDE Frameworks 5. Um, application, but it's running from within GNOME because we've got the KD Frameworks 5 installed, so that allows it to work. So, next one's a video editor. Oh, yes, this needs MLT, so let's install that. So I'll move that into the directory above. Um, So there's no other options here. Just build it as it is. Um, it says there's no test, but we can test it by running a video file, so we'll have to find a, it looks like an mp4 file, 
So let's do a search for MP4. Let's get rid of the errors on the search. So there's that one there. I'm not sure if we've viewed that already. So we do source melt melt and then the file name. Okay, looks like it's not working because the package needs to be installed first, which makes sense. Uh, so let's do install. Now let's rerun that command, it should work now. Yeah, that looks like that's working. Looks like I can't fast forward it at all, so I'm just going to let it run to the end to see if there's anything else appears. Looks like there isn't going to be anything, but you can see it's put some, oh you can fast forward L forward one minute looks like I may have oh next frame I've did, I did lowercase l so it's too space to play it, yes it starts again capital L yeah it's gone to the end of the movie so it looks like it is a minute long and Q to quit so that seems to be working fine. So I'll mark that off on 42. And now we can tidy up and extract KDN Live. So again, there's no other options, just build it as it is.
Okay, it's built. No test, so I just install it. Okay, let's see if that's appeared in here. No, so uh see if I can find that command to refresh the no menu. These actually might do it automatically at the end of the installation, so update desktop databases of that one. Oh that's the MIME file type, so I don't think that will be the command. Let's try it. this one here oh that's only the icon cache so maybe um, these have to be run um, by ad uh, editing the menu manually or maybe it gets refreshed when GNOME is restarted I'm not sure I'll say I don't really know GNOME that well because I don't really use it. But we can certainly start it from the command line. And they can see the windows come up with a like an editor and some timelines down the bottom here. So um, let's go to help. Again you get this menu on all the apps about KDE but specifically about KDE and Live. You can see it's found the MLT version it's using MPEG FFmpeg library so let's pick those up and some other libraries it's using there. So that's installed that's fine. Got a segmentation fault there not sure why that would be Try running it again. Looks like it's on. I'm quitting. So that's not too good. But um, why that is, I don't know. Whether it's because um, it's not running properly in the KDE environment, um, I'm not sure. It seems to be running all right while it's running. It's just when it exits, it's causing the segmentation faults. So, yeah. Bad RIP value. So that might need to be um, investigated if that continues happening, especially if it happens in inside Plasma, inside KD5. So I'm going to cross that one off and move on to K-Mix, which is just a simple sound mixer. Well, so simple, it's quite a good sound mixer actually.
Okay, let's install that. So K mix. Right, I think usually this just runs to the terminal. Oh, uh, sorry, to the um, taskbar, but I presume because we're not in KDE, it's not being made visible. So maybe, maybe some of these packages aren't completely compatible. Out of that. Let's see if there's any options. Keep visibility. Let's try that. No. no it looks like that does need plasma to to uh, work that one, or at least appear. Let's just check that hasn't crashed. No, that hasn't caused any crashes. So let's move on to K Help Center next. So this requires Grantly. Again, this looks straightforward. Okay, that's built. Let's install. And tidy up and tick this one off. General libraries. Let's install K Help Center. Oops. So you can see each of these packages is fairly straightforward. Um, there's only like one or two differences such as this package. Right, this needs the KF5 prefix which we haven't got so I'm just going to source profile and now I can run this in so that's complete Just run this one now. 
So there, there it is. It's just a like a manual, really. So that could be useful if you're new to KDE. Next one is console, which is the KDE equivalent of the terminal emulator. So we've got the main program plus a patch. So non-plasma environments such as what we're in now with uh, GNOME, the console scroll, scroll bar and its handle will do not show up well if desired, apply the optional patch to the package. It says you can edit the patch to alter the colours. What I might do is leave that off to see how bad it is, being as I would probably normally use console within KD5 and not GNOME. Um, so I'll ignore the patch for now. Um, I'm going to carry on using this, uh, uh, was it XF term? I can't remember what it's called now. The one that was provided by, or well, LX term was it? I can't remember which one it's called now. I think it was LX term. Oh, it is the XFCE4 term. We are, I'll carry on using this one. I'm in GNOME. And then when I boot into KDE, I'll, I'll use console then. So install it. And then just run the console and you can see it's uh well that scroll bar didn't look too bad actually. Obviously the window is the title bar is different but um everything else should look familiar. You can see it's quite a comprehensive terminal even storing profiles and as I said before with configuration of all the um, KDE apps there's lots of options all sorts of things so that's that one so I'll mark that one off Next we've got a library for the looks of it. Oh, for manipulating image data. Okay, that's because we've got a couple of packages coming up which are kind of graphics related. So that's that one. And as I said before, it's a library, so there's nothing to run. The next package is for viewing, well, various formats. You use it mainly for viewing PDFs, but as you can see, it does PDF, PostScript, TIFF, CHM, DJVU, DVI, XPS, and EPUB. There's quite a wide range of document formats that will uh, render. Uh, let me just check this QCA, I'm not sure. QCA tool. No, we haven't 
install that. Right, let's install that first. Uh, what section is this in? General libraries. Service. Yeah, it hasn't been crossed off, so let's install this first. Obviously, I've looked at it, and that's why the link had changed colour. Um, pretty sure I've got all the other dependencies. Just a little fix with a set command, and no options to change again. complete we can run make test Okay, so that has completed building, uh, sort of testing, so we can install it now. And that's done. I'll mark that off the list and we go back to Ocular. build it. Actually you can see it's missing certain libraries so it's not going to build all the capabilities so for example CHM so it won't build the CHM support DJ view Libra so it won't build DJ view support but if you want then they're probably quite highly recommended actually.
Okay, so that has built now. So we can install it. And tidy up. So for an ocular, so pretty standard layout for a PDF viewer as you might expect. Uh, let's try loading one. Right, there's loads in there. Um, tutorial, Barclay DB driver collections. Let's try that one. Yeah, there you go. So that's the PDF, well I'll call it PDF here as you can see it does a lot more than that. Let's mark that one off. Next one, libkdc raw. So it's another library and this is probably to allow the next package to have much more functionality because it's a, an image viewer That. So now we move on to coin view. Yeah, there's that exit two. So we can save this. And start building it. Uh, copy and paste.
and make install. It's done. So that's a wrap around CDDB. And that probably allows a bit more functionality for this program, which is a disk burner, CD, DVD burner. So this is the burner I normally use. I've had more success with this than I have had with the GNOME Brazero one. Um, Lib Music Brains, isn't that the one we just installed? Oh, right, okay, that's what it's doing. Color, it's a different version, so we need to install that one as well. I just realized and tick the other one off. And I didn't do libcdda either. Oh, sorry, that was in the KDE, wasn't it? That's right. So let's download this. And the patch. Put them in the parent directory. This is version 2 we're using. So we'll run this patching, but remember it's actually two directories down now, so we just need to put a couple more dots in. There's no extra config commands that we're really interested in, so let's build it. Build to Python bindings and we can install the package. And we can test the Python bindings. and install it as well. Oops. Did I put a is there a special character in front of that? So obviously that command won't work like that. That's better. Okay. So that's the other lip music brains. And now we can download K3B. Build it with these commands here.
Okay, so that's built. Let's install it. And I'll we'll run it. Yeah, there you go. It's just a pretty usual file manager. Um, goes to the root drive. Oh, that's the DVD drive. I wonder why that's come up with OS as the name. It's strange because it is empty. This is the root drive. And there's our LFS tools that built. So I should double click on that and it's come up with ARC. There's a little window there saying it's loading it because it's a big file obviously. working as you'd expect it to. And look, look at our sources as well. Um, I think all these icons are KDE icons, I think. I don't remember. I don't normally have the icon display on. I normally have the list display. I normally have them small like that. You see they look a lot different now. But yeah, I'm just uh, zooming in by holding control and moving the wheel to alter the size of the icons, so it's quite scalable. And we can go into the KD5 directory and see everything we've installed there. So yeah, that's one from outside of the BLFS book, but as it says, the instructions are fairly generic. So let's try another one. Might be useful. Um, Firelight is quite a good one. It's just one of these um, ones that explores the disk and shows you how much space directories are ta taking up. So let's recall that build command. Install it. So that's it, nice and quick. So as you can see, it comes up with all the these. I think it normally comes up with the partitions rather than the disk. So that's why we've got boot separate and why the EFI partition is separate. So if I go to the boot disk, you can see it scans it. So it's about a million files there. I think it came up with yeah one just over a million files occupying 47 gigabytes and you can see roughly the space is taken up three ways between what's in user what's in opt and our sources so the sources have expanded nearly double the size effectively that's 8% 8% that's not right is it 13 gig, 15 gig. Oh, I see the percentage is the number of files, right? So the number of files, it's not the size, number of files in sources is 8% of the total number of files. Ops has got nearly 50% of all the files on the disk, and users has got about a third. And you can zoom into these. So, for example, we can see if we go into Ops that Text Live is the biggest directory. And then 2020 and 2019 are in there. Looks like 2020 is slightly bigger. Just wraps around over halfway. And you can keep burying down. Let's have a look at that directory there. And so on. And rescan will just obviously rescan it. And go all the way back up to the root. So yeah, it's quite a good little 
tool to have if you're running out of uh, space. Um, I assume to just a couple more. Um, I suppose let's do a, a Mahjong game. Um, let's tidy this one up. Carjong, is it? Right, this does need other things, so what's it need? It needs car. Carjong. KF5, K Marjong, Lib Config. Five K more John Lib. So this is the one we need here. So let's install that application, that library rather. I'll clear this one up and extract the K Mahjong and we'll try the same build instructions on that. Yep, that seems like that. And we'll install that. Now let's try the car jong again. Right, there's another one by the looks of it. All right, it needs something called Twisted, so unfortunately we haven't got that. Uh, let's see if it's part of this. I don't recognise it. No, it's also external, so unfortunately we can't install that one. It's a bit sad. So I'll get rid of the lib card wrong, even though we've got that library in there. And RM Carl John. Right, let's try and find something else to put in. Uh, all right, how about a calculator? It's nice and simple. Install it. Cake out again, usual kind of calculator, several calculators here. This is pretty normal these days. So, and again, there's loads of settings for how you want it to appear or operate. You can select the font or the colours and set your own constants as well. 
Um, right, I don't want to go through too many of these. are just so many things here. It's easy to get lost in thinking, oh, I want that. Oh, that sounds good. Um, let's have a quick look, see if anything catches my eye. Loads of libraries there. Um, oh, this one's quite good actually to have. Um, Yak Yakuaki. Uh, Umbrella's good if you're a programmer. It's a. Um, oh, I can't remember what they called it now. It's. Yeah, it's a modeling thing for the Flow Project. I'll, I'll download it and install it. It will remind me. I'll download and install this Yakuaki thing. Um, no, it's it's gone from my head what what it is now. It's used in programming when you're in object programming where you're trying to work out the hierarchy of um, objects. Uh, CD. Oh, this means other thing, Q25K, widgets. widgets. Okay, that needs something else, so I won't install that one then. Um, I have to look that up because I can't think the correct term for it now. Oh, that's it, UML modeler, that was it. So that allowed you to draw the UML diagrams. So that's what that is if you're a programmer. Let's try this Yakuaki program. I'm probably saying that totally wrong. I'm not sure how or if this will work in GNOME because it just starts automatically when you, you bring up Plasma. So let's do make install. Let's have a look at the help. Okay, so there's no options to speak of. Let's run it. What happens is when you start off uh, Plasma, you just get this little notification saying it's ready and oh this is probably because the first time I've run it um, it's normally operated by F12 but you can change that um, basically all it is is a drop down terminal so yeah it doesn't look like it's working in this if I close it down there oh it did yeah maybe it does run in the background then Oh, that's right. Yeah, see, press F12. So all you need to do is normally is press F12. Looks like it's not running in GNOME, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, normally, you just press F12 and you get a terminal come up. It's quite useful just to have it appear and then disappear. And it doesn't forget anything that you've done. It just stays there. So maybe I'll demonstrate that when we've got Plasma installed. But uh, for now, I'll leave leave that as it is. Oh, Spectacle is quite a good one. That's a screenshot program. Just seen that. And the Print Manager is quite good as well. But yeah, like I say, I could go on forever. There's yeah, maybe 50 or more um, extra applications to install there. So anyway, let's get back to completing KDE 5 which, as I say, at the moment, it's it's complete. It's the plasma part. It's the desktop environment we haven't got. So that's what the next bit is about.